Gossi here. Welcome to Emerald Live. Oh, we got a big show for you tonight. Oh, yeah. A delicious big show at that. Mm. You know, the Caribbean, the Caribbean islands. What a vacation paradise, huh? Oh, yeah. Hey, but much more than the beaches, boats, and bikinis. <laughs> well, they're there, yeah. Mom. <laughs> the Caribbean is the food of Trinidad, Jamaica, Aruba. Uh, what the hell make ya, Ruba? Right? That's oh, yeah. it. That's a song, right? That's yeah. It. Uh, Speaking yeah. about songs, we got Doc Gibbs in the Emerald Live Band. <laughs> How you doing, folks? All right. I don't know about you, I thought maybe we'd go down there and visit the islands tonight. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, man. We yes. go see yes. the islands. Yes, yes. I'm the talking island. about like Calypso rice oh, yeah. and roti. Oh, roti. Oh, yeah. uh, and roti. something yeah. I, uh, fantastic called uh, chuchos. Mm. Chuchos. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> well, it's a mix of Latin and African and. Boy, I love the food down there. Sounds good. To so me. that's where we're going, folks. We're going down to the islands tonight, right here on Emerald Live. Doc, I'm going to uh, take you down to the islands tonight. I'm Mom really excited ready about... ready to go, brother. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm actually uh, quite excited about tonight's show and menu. You want to know what's on the menu tonight? Yeah. yeah. Check this out. We're going to start first with a unbelievable coconut, lobster. Maybe we'll even add a little shrimp since we got a big budget here tonight. Oh, yeah. A little Caribbean-style soup. And then we're going to go with the guava-glazed pork loin. That's going to be with some of that calypso rice I was talking about. And then, you ready for this? Drum roll, please. First time ever on Emerald Live. Tonight, we will feature Trinidad curried goat. Oh. Oh. And then we're going to end that. Oh yeah! And then we're going to end that with some Merloton fritters, better known as chayote or Merlotons. We call them in Louisiana. Mm. Really fantastic. Mm. Let's get started. I'm so excited. Let's talk about this first soup. I got a little shrimp stock, and that would be made by uh, shrimp shells covered with water, a little salt and pepper. Right. Real simple. I'm going to show you this Caribbean spice bag. Great. Wow. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the foundation of the soup. With a little oil, we're going to start with some sweet bell pepper. And we're going to start with some onion. Pretty basic ingredients. Once this cooks here, got the heat on, we're going to add a little salt, mm. some pepper, just a little foundation. Now, we're going to cook this for about five or six minutes. going to get nice and translucent is the name. Oh, translucent. When it gets nice and translucent, we're going to add some fresh ginger. Fresh garlic in there. And then probably one of the hottest peppers in the planet. Mm. These are called Scotch Bonnet. I know, such a lovely name, Scotch Bonnet. And it'll blow the roof of your head right off if you have too much of them. What a false name that is, Scotch Bonnet. Boom! So we're going to take these really, really delicious pepper and add some of that. 
And then to that, we're going to add the beginning of our soup, which is the shrimp stock. All right. Now, let me tell you about something yummy. We are going to make this sort of island spice packet by taking some lemongrass and a little bit of mustard seed, uh -huh. which is going to be spicy. And what we do is we fold this over here, fold it over, fold it over. And then what we're going to do is we're going to tie it with some twine to make this little sort of like a bouquet ghani, right. except it's an island spice pack. Nice. The nice. island spice pack. <laughs> when we come back, we'll show you what it looks like. Stick around. Doc Gibbs. <laughs> here we're cooking a little inspiration from the Caribbean tonight and uh, that first uh, thing we started a little lobster shrimp coconut soup so we started with the onions and the bell peppers and the ginger and the garlic and see what I did is the island spice pack see I got it right here that way when we're done we can just easily take it got it tied up to the side here oh yeah all right now to that we need to stop making it happy. So we let this simmer for about 20 to 30 minutes. No big deal. Little evaporation, some concentration and flavor. Now it's time to bring it up another notch. Yes. Another notch. So, lime juice. It's the island, that island cooking. So the juice of about two or three limes cilantro or coriander is also it's called we're going to add that in there and then some coconut milk oh yeah there's big time budget show here you know <laughs> now we're going to start letting that simmer we're going to get that around now sometimes you may get a little bit of bead or what i call bead in this little beads and that is, is because the acidity of the lime juice would like a milk product. But don't, you don't have to call 911. It's not bad, okay? <laughs> now, we're going to let that continue to keep simmering. While it's simmering, we're going to talk about the Great Island shellfish. First, I got those uh, spiny lobsters, right? So uh, just lightly blanch to get the meat out of the shell. And then we'll cut it up in pieces. Mmm. And then like, see how it's, it's raw. Just slightly poached to take the meat out of the shells. Now what we're going to do is cut it in pieces or chunks. Then I've got some shrimp or shrimps. So I love shrimps. Now, first thing, we're going to take the lobster. And then we're going to add the lobster meat right in here. Yeah. Oh, I wish you could smell this. Oh. Aren't you just a little tired of not having smell-o-vision at home? <laughs> then the shrimps. What we'll do is we're going to season them. So we'll add a little salt. And for me, because it's that heat thing, it's that island thing, you see? My philosophy is that where it's hot, the food is spicy, and the desserts are sweeter. Think about it. 
<laughs> Makes sense to me. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a little cayenne pepper. And we're going to make these shrimps happy. Oh, they're smiling right now. They're so happy. So now we're going to mix that in here. And then we're going to add the shrimps inside of the soup. Now, we don't want to rush the cooking here. You know, I don't know why. Gotta wash your hands. Got the lobster police out there. <laughs> Shrimps police right around the corner. Now, I don't know why everyone thinks that you just got to have the stove just completely jacked up. That's why it's a food of love thing. Let it get happy. Let it all come to the party together. Okay, so that's what we're doing with the shrimp and the lobster right now. Now, while that's getting happy, let's uh, switch over here to pork loin lands. Now, here's a boneless pork loin. Rinsed. Fat side up. Now, what I want to do is take my paring knife, and I want to make some slits. Okay. Oh, yes. Slits. Oh, yes. 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 And then I want to take some garlic and I want to put it right inside of the slits. Just, I don't know, maybe it's me. I have all of these kind of food games. Hide the garlic. Sounds good to me. So that's what we're doing. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to finish putting the slits of garlic in here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start searing it in this dry pan here. Salt and pepper, of course. A little bit of oil. We're going to start searing it fat side down. While that's happening, I'm going to make this guava paste. What that consists of. I have quince paste. Orange juice, lime juice, sugar, shallot or red onion, garlic, lime zest, a little cumin, and, of course, a little ginger and a little garlic. We're going to put that all in a saucepan together. When we come back, I'm going to show you the pork loin searing, and it's time for our coconut lobster shrimp soup. Stick around. We'll be right back. Dr. Gibbs. <laughs> for you. Here we go with that glaze, right? We got the quince paste that we talked about. Mmm. Lime juice, lemon juice, sugar. Just like the islands. Look at that. Humidity has set in. Ginger. Cumin. Mmm. Red onion. The garlic and the lime zest. Now, we're going to get all of that melted down. Perfect. Now, the pork loin, salt and peppered. Plenty of garlic in there. Just a teeny bit of oil. Get the oven on at about 350, th ah, 375. Coat the bottom of the pan. And the pork loin, fat side down. We start searing that now. Oh, yeah, babe. Now, this side here is not seasoned. I hate one-sided seasoned food. So I'm going out for this side here. Salt and pepper, real simple. A little salt. Mm -hmm. Now, while that's happening, the shrimps, the lobster, yummy, yummy, they are done. 
Here's how I like to serve it. You can take the spice pack out of there or leave it off to the side. Go in there, right there for the soup. I seasoned it. Then I came back and tasted it to re-season it. How I simply like to garnish it is just with a little bit of cilantro leaves. I just kind of get a little cilantro like that. Just like that, and it's done. There you have it, a little shrimp coconut soup. Now, our glaze is looking good. The oven's on 375. What we're going to do now is we're going to take it, turn it on the other side. Oh, yeah, don't worry about the cloves. What we're going to do is when we get this nice and seared, we're going to bake it in the oven, roast it in the oven 375. About 40, 45 minutes, this size roast, it should be about that 140 internal temperature, which is not quite done. Why? Because what we're going to do is we're going to take this guava glaze here, okay? And then we're going to start glazing the pork roast, the last five or ten minutes cooking. You want to take the roast out at about 145 because my theory is, take it out, you got to let it rest. As it's resting, it's moving up in temperature, about five six eight degrees so i like it nice medium okay perfect are you with me so far yeah. <laughs> now while that's happening let's start this rice a little bit i got some mustard greens so you could use collard greens beet greens whatever greens you have mustard works great turnip greens look great work great then I've got some brown rice, squash, tomato, honey, garlic, little stock for the brown rice, little thyme, and this here pick a pepper sauce. This is pick a pepper from the islands. Kind of smells a little hot. <laughs> smells good. So what we want to do is this. We're going to start with a little oil. Oh, the pork roast is looking good. Now to the oil, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the squash. We're going to cook that out a little bit. Then everything's going to go inside the pot, except for the mustard greens. I want to chop them just a little bit finer. Everything in the pot, we're going to put a lid on them so we can get a little calypso rice going on. Are you with me out there? Yeah. All right, so we got the pork loin. Oh, looking good. We got the old guava paste here that we're making here. See, it's breaking down. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Hey, when we come back, I'll show you how to put it all together. Stick around. Right here. joining us Caribbean cooking tonight or at least I should say flavors so let's go back to the rice for a second I waited for you <laughs> now what we're gonna do that squash starts getting brown here's what we're gonna do we're gonna add the tomato we're gonna add the rice we're gonna add the garlic 
We're going to add some thyme. Now, do you want the whole thing in there? You want just the... Okay. We're going to add that. Not yet. <laughs> now, we're, we're going to add the old mustard greens in here. No, oh, don't worry. They always look like there's a lot. A little bit of stock. That would be chicken broth. And then... How's the soup? Well, I guess I got to do one more show. <laughs> Little honey. Oh, yeah, babe. Now, now I'm going to add that pickled pepper. Oh, yeah. I go in there for a little water like that, just... Ah, yeah, babe. Go to the last drop. Now, we'll put the lid on it. Lower the temperature a little. Perfect. Pork loin. 145. Oh, yes, it's happy. It's gonna be happier because now what we're gonna do, we take it out of the oven. That guava paste has been reducing down. Look at that. Now, we're going to have some fun. Guava paste. Ah, look, don't mess around. Just, you know, that's what I do. Look, be over here 10 minutes is more. 10 minutes is like a day off sometimes for me. So look. Yeah. So now, we're going to go back in the oven with that. Another five degrees. Let it get really good and happy. Oh, there it goes. To happiness. Bye-bye. Okay. So the pork loin is almost there. Calypso rice is on. Now what we're going to do is we're going to marinate our Trinidad-style goat. Now, people in this country, when they, you say goat, you know, it's not like a very, it's not like steak, you know? <laughs> it's not quite up there yet in the popularity list. Where, as other countries, it is. And, uh, boy, I'll tell you, it's great. And uh, you buy, basically, young goat. You notice I said young. I didn't say baby, okay? I said young. Well, you wouldn't buy old goat. I mean, who wants to eat an old goat? Just give me a slab of mutton then, you know? So what you're gonna do is we're gonna take that and we're gonna marinate it. I like to marinate it for at least a day, overnight at least. Pieces of goat, you can get it from your butcher. Oh, this is really fantastic stuff. Tastes a lot like venison. But then again, I don't like making those, you know, similarities. Because venison is venison and goat is goat. It's like, oh, what does rabbit taste like? Oh, it tastes like chicken. <laughs> Bull honky it does. It tastes like rabbit. Sweet. Delicious. Now... I'm going to take some red onion or shallot. I'm going to take some green onion. Then I'm going to take some Trinidad curry powder. Oh, yeah, I'm on. Some of that Scotch bonnet for the heat. And some garlic in there, too, right? And a little H2O. Now, here's what you got to do. Fold it over. Cover it with plastic wrap and then let it just get happy overnight, okay? We come back after this is marinated overnight. We're going to brown it in some hot oil, just like we would do shanks or oxtail. I mean, if I was to say we are cooking oxtail right now, you wouldn't have made a face at me like when I said goat. <laughs> right, ma'am? Let's be honest. Let's be honest with each other here, please. This isn't Camp Cupcake. 
This is the real deal. What you see is what you get, baby. You know I'm just teasing you. What's your name? Hello? Yes, you. I wasn't talking to her. You have the red shirt on. I was talking to you, Hazel. How you doing? Do you like goat? At least you're honest, okay? That's what the vibe is in here, too. And we're going to try to change that a little bit. I think we may be setting the place on fire. <laughs> Not yet. We're close. Don't anybody, don't anybody panic that the cutting board may be on fire any minute. <laughs> Never fear. I'm here. This smoking thing you see over here, it's not Emerald's fireplace. It's just hot. Because what we're going to do is we're going to make a little bread dough. Roti. Roll it out real thin. We're going to start griddling it. Then we got the pork loin coming out. The calypso rice. We're going to start the goat. And then we're going to go another notch. Stay with me. Got a lot going on here right now. I know. I'm yeah, it. I uh, during the break I started browning a little bit of that marinated goat in some oil. Don't worry about the uh, spices getting down there. It's just going to make a bunch of yum yums. So that's the first step there that we're going to do. The uh, delicious pork loin with the guava paste kind of the guava glaze in the oven calypso rice oh roti that's where we left off that would be this bread see this is here is a little sticky okay when you're making a bread dough it's a little sticky you can just add just a tiny bit of flour work it again okay incorporate it what I like to do with this dough is I like to put it in a ice box for a little bit I wrap it in plastic wrap and uh, when I'm ready to use it I'll show you what we're gonna do it's a good thing a lot of bread doughs are not done like that but this isn't uh, any yeast in here okay sort of like a flat bread so we'll come back to that in a second so we're browning the goat all right when that uh, Pork loin, like I said, is at about 145, preferably. May sneak up to 150 on you. We'll just take it out. Look at that, huh? Then you got to let it rest a little bit. So here we go. Oh, rub it all over. I love that. So we'll let it rest a little bit. Looks good, huh? All right, let it rest. Now what we're going to do is we're going to continue to brown this. All right. So the roti. What you want to do? Wow, it's a live one. <laughs> it's going to be a little sticky. What I do is I just use a little bit of flour like this. And then you, uh, you know, you can just kind of cut yourself off a little piece like this. Flatten it down. Doesn't have to be like perfectly round. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just work with a little flour here in our rolling pin. And we're going to roll them real, real thin little circles 
Now you can do them thinner. You can stretch them out more. Okay? You do that ahead of time as thin as possible. And that's what they look like. See, and the thing that you do is you put that like on a griddle that's fairly hot. Put that like right on the griddle. Fairly hot. Somebody turn my heat down, of course. Oh, yeah, they kill me. <laughs> it's like mess with your own stove, you know? Don't come over and mess with my stove. Yeah, I got these little demons during the commercial break. They just fly out of the ceiling. <laughs> Feeling demonish tonight. Oh, uh, yeah. So, look. This thing is rested. Rotis on the old stove. Look at that. Got that Calypso rice thing going on. You see that? Now, we don't want the thyme. I wish you could smell it, too. It's got this really great mustard green flavor. And then we'll just try and see how our pork is. So we just take like, see the garlic studs in there? Oh yeah. Never fear, baby. Put a few pieces like that. And then you always just save enough of that guava. There you have it, folks. Little guava. See, the roti we're going to serve with that. Almost done. One side is done. We're going to come to the other side. Now, the goat is all brown. See that? I'm scraping down the bottom. I'm adding in the rest of the other brown pieces. Okay? To that. I'm going to add tomato, and I'm going to add some H2O. We're going to bring this up to a boil, and we're going to start simmering or braising these down till they get nice and tender. Back to the roti for a second. Serve a little bit of that off to the side. Oh, yeah, babe. So you eat that roti with the guava and the pork and the calypso rice thing. Can you feel the love? Yes. Oh, thank God. <laughs> All right, now, let me talk to you real quick about another dish. Merlotons, chayotes, that would be these things. We also in Louisiana call them alligator pears. They're kind of sweet, but they're a vegetable, so they say. What we're going to do is we're going to take flour, sugar, cinnamon, nutmeg, baking powder, dry ingredients. We're going to take merloton that I grated with a grater, a couple of eggs, some butter, vanilla, wet ingredients. We're going to put the wet with the dry, making a fritter batter. So now we'll have a merloton fritter batter. Wow. <laughs> I'll show you what it looks like when we come back. Stick around, Doc Gibbs. Caribbean journey here tonight. Flavors, smells, delicious. Roti. I made a few more for this delicious goat stew. 
Trinidad flavors. Let's check on that. About an hour and a half, an hour and 45 minutes. That simmers down. And uh, you saw how simple these ingredients are. I mean, we're not talking rocket science here. Now, you can also see that the water, the goat, the tomato, the seasoning, it's pretty loose. Pretty loose. If you like it loose like that, fine. I like a little bit more mm -mm 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 to that. So, take a little cold water and some cornstarch. And this cooking term is called a slurry. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to add just a tiny bit of body to this, and we're going to add that slurry right in there. Once it comes to a boil, you'll know exactly how thick it is. Slurry. Plantains. Mmm. Oh, this is a wonderful, wonderful show. <laughs> I like to, uh, they can't be too ripe, though. And uh, I like to slice them thin. And then what we'll do is we're going to fry these up. Oh, yeah, these are great. You know, sometimes what I'll do is I'll just take these, fry them up, plantains, okay? Come, they come out of the hot oil, sugar and cinnamon. What a snack. Oh, yeah, babe. So why I'm frying these is because, and they got a lot of starch in them. I'm frying these because what we're going to do is serve these now with the uh, awesome stew of goat. Oh, yeah, babe. See, just a little bit more body to that, okay? Not quite as watery. See, it's got a little bit more body from the cornstarch. All right. So when you're ready to serve this, how's the pork? Excellent. Good? All right, they're nice and hard right now. Nice and firm, crispy. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take them out. Drain them. Season them with a little salt. Okay. So there's the fried plantains. Now what we're going to do, we're going to go into the stew. Serve it up like that. Real simple. Okay. Then we're going to get some plantains. Just kind of hanging out. Then you get some roti to eat it with. Off to the side. And there you have it, folks. Beautiful little stew. I got the dry ingredients, and I got the merlotan or the chayote. Now we're going to mix the dry and the wet ingredients to make a batter. Once we get that batter, and it's the right consistency, could use maybe a little bit more flour. You can always add, but you can't take it away. So now, still looking a little loose because of the water of the chayotes. So what you want to do now is we want to go test one. So, we're going to go to the fryer real quick. Drop one in here. See how we made out. Now, if they just like totally disintegrate in your oil, you know that you got too much moisture inside of your batter, okay? And uh, that's what they do. They make these merlotan or chayote fritters down there. It's got that wonderful sort of apple pear flavor. They'll sprinkle it with a little sugar. Or what they'll do is they'll take coconut milk and sugar and a little orange zest and sometimes a vanilla bean or not, okay? They'll scrape it down. They'll make like a little coconut syrup, okay? A little coconut sauce. And they'll serve it like that. And they're flavored, of course, because down there in the islands, they flavor it with a little bit of rum just to fortify it. Yeah, but they don't, they don't use a lot. They don't use a lot of the rum because they want to drink it. 
smart guys. Now to finish this whole thing, you can see the consistency of the fritters right here. They're perfect. We'll drain them as well. And then what we'll do, we'll take a little bit of that delicious coconut sauce. We'll add a little bit of that on the bottom of the plate with the vanilla bean. And then we'll just serve the fritters, just a little pile of them like that. And that way you can just sort of dip them when you want inside of the coconut sauce. Unbelievable. Yes, indeed. I want to thank you all for joining me tonight. I'm Emeril Lagasse. See you next time.